no problem, I would say that. Uh, so, uh, the reason for this event is the book launch of um, the Art Pool Art Research Center's uh, actual uh, publication. Um, this is why we are here tonight. And I want to thank for the audience for coming. I want to thank uh, for the participants of the discussion, for this discussion uh, for coming. And of course, I want to thank uh, the Erste Foundation that making this small event possible, and also the Department of Theatre and the Media. Very nice, and I have the opportunity to welcome everyone else in the Erste Foundation. I am. Um, will be very short, but I really have to say in the name of the foundation, but really on a very personal level also, that I'm extremely happy that you could realize that the presentation also here in Vienna, and thanks to Katalin for you know, hanging on there and, and keeping everyone together and organizing that. That's really great that you managed, and thanks to everyone else for you know, taking the time and energy to, to be here tonight. Um, yeah, I, I have to say it was really a, a, a great uh, cooperation we had um, and uh, as, as Katalin mentioned, I'm working for ESPA Foundation in the culture program as a project manager and therefore I was responsible for carrying out the, the application that Art Pool handed in. I looked it up, it was January 2011 when we received a rather desperate email from uh, Julia telling us that I think it was the, the city of Budapest who stepped out of the regular uh, funding agreement and that hit up to very unexpected and, and unprepared and then um, yeah, we tried to, to talk about what, what could be possible and what we could do. And I remember that shortly after the first contact, I, I traveled to Budapest and uh, for the first time I, I visited the archive and we met personally. And yeah, I have to say it, it was really um, very impressive to, to see that, you know, richness and depth of material that's um, stored there, there's really remarkable um, material from artist postcard collection to um, artist stamps collection that is just beautiful and, and many more of, of all sorts and, and varieties of material and I'm sure that we will hear all about that. And um, what also impressed me a lot was um, also your enthusiasm and your sincerity that you, you know, lived there and that was really um, felt and um, yeah, one could really see that that's a, a life's work that's, that's happening there and um, yeah, therefore I'm very happy that the book came out of it and it's also kind of a tribute to your attitude and energy and sincerity and, and I really would like to thank you both especially and, and to my thanks to Julia because mostly my vis-a-vis -vis and all the you know um, details and it was just always uh, very precise and uh, fast and reliable and yeah everything you could wish for in a, in a project partner. So, thanks, and yeah, let's carry on with the interest. Please thank you for this possibility of uh, editing the book and, and making it uh, yeah, no, at it's all. So, it's, 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 really, really, it's really fantastic really. that you appreciate it. <laughs> really a pleasure. So, thanks. And before I hand over the words to the participants here, and I would like to share my first impressions about um, the book itself. For me, uh, the art pool publication represents uh, an innovative way of thinking in, in networks and in intermedia relations. I see a lot of stratifications of media printed in this book. It displays uh, um, 
amongst others, but I would say above everything, the philosophy of George Galantai, who was um, always looking for theoretical systems to place his to place his artistic projects in, and beginning with uh, the kind of Gesamtkunstwerk, which the chapel exhibitions in Baratonboga were and extending this into his correspondence network via connect, connection art uh, to the international sphere, uh, art sphere, and his immersive uh, installations um, which uh, are placed each summer in college, for example. And Galantai's uh, worldview and his initiative of the active archive was verified by thinkers like Arthur Kostler and Wilhelm Prusa, uh, respectively the dimensionistic perspectives of Karl Tanto Shirado, just to mention a few of these theoreticians. And without the inclusion and the knowledge of his theoretical writings into the publication, um, the art book is, I think, hard uh, to understand in its sum. So I think that this, um, the measure of theory and uh, of practical knowledge this book transfers is absolutely uh, optimal. Uh, the volume is for me uh, a result uh, of a co-working process which included not only diverse forms of mediation, but uh, the human capital of knowledge that uh, derived from the editors, from uh, the archivists, uh, from the designers and different international researchers and artists who were involved in this uh, production. I will finish soon. Uh, for me, the book represents um, the digital and, and the analog at the same time, because uh, all the um, um, all the values that were used uh, through the internet communication are also visible in uh, the publication itself, and all human senses are really challenged while we are reading this book. And the art book book is not only really a standard work for researchers who want to unmask the dynamics of the historical and contemporary second public sphere, but it is a piece of art itself. So these were the thoughts that first came to my mind while I was uh, reading and uh, partly editing uh, this uh, book. And I would like to know your opinion, what were these uh, impressions in, uh, in your uh, point of view? My, from my perspective, I am researching um, voluminous archive Julius Collett, who um, was working primarily in Slovakia and Bratislava. Uh, he already passed out in 2007, but he left a huge archive of uh, which, which not only uh, comprises the, the work documentation and self-historicization of the artist, but also art scene, uh, the Slovak art scene. And uh, he was also networking uh, uh, internationally, but not in such scale as UEI uh, and uh, uh, But uh, uh, somehow, uh, in a, uh, uh, it's, it's comparable uh, if we we perceive archive as a strategy, archive as a, as a medium how to through switch uh, to, uh, uh, to preserve, not only to preserve, but also activate. And from my point of view, uh, the, the most important uh, um, um, the most important uh, uh, let's say uh, uh, input of the artists, archiving artists, uh, artists creating archive, uh, is that they, uh, they uh, also as Dirt has it in, in his text and uh, in the, uh, introducing uh, art book is to, to, to have an active archive. And I, from my reading, uh, 
it is activation uh, which uh, uh, not only gives uh, information and uh, which was which is preserved, but also activates the uh, scholar, activates uh, the reader, activates the viewer, and uh, this is from my point really important uh, achievement. And uh, I'm very very pleased to when I. Uh, uh, when I went through the book, I could I could understand uh, the means of activations, which go many directions, and uh, there are many uh, projects uh, documented. They they uh, were realizing through uh, time in many years, and uh, also there are many like the periods of art pool, how, how it has changed through time, uh, so it's really a um, really good book and also from my point of, view, point of view, I'm art historian, so I'm following literature uh, uh, on East European avant-garde as well as uh, Catalin, so uh, from this point uh, uh, this this book is is uh, very important uh, uh, in uh, re reading or reinterpreting art of uh, East Europe uh, or former former East Eastern Europe and uh, I mean there is a lot of there is a lot of uh, valuable material texts and. Uh, um, I have um, many questions <laughs> for, for you, yeah. so, uh, um, also concerning uh, uh, some projects they realized uh, and you know, how, they, how they were networking and uh, uh, they even they created the Artist and Museum, so it's, it's a, they created Artist Museum even, so they, they have, uh, they had a um, they have a lot of connections to Fluxus, like uh, Flu uh, Fluxus flagpole projects, and uh, and uh, so uh, there are many interesting things to, to discuss. And uh, I mean, um, this is one. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for the invitation. Um, for me, it was a challenging invitation because uh, the possibility of uh, exchange and because I didn't know anybody, so it uh, was intriguing uh, to take part in the uh, possibility to actually get the book and also to go through uh, and to make uh, uh, research and connect uh, with the uh, Eastern European context that is uh, uh, the main uh, context of research. So, when I go to the book, uh, I put three things. I, I made uh, quite an intensive research and uh, it's very difficult now, um, uh, from my perspective, to uh, be uh, critical at this precise point because I found that it's a life work. It's a life work because it was done in a very uh, important moment. things coming together, uh, they uh, are presented, actually, as you can see they are uh, just I wrote in a book somewhere, it's here, it's a, um, a block uh, of, uh, and, uh, it's a way, also with the weight, not only with what it's uh, taking, like white work, art work, archive, um, it is very difficult now to, um, in, uh, immediately, uh, to uh, make a step because what is uh, uh, the debate is actually to understand from my point of view uh, first uh, to say this is a monumental work and then to understand uh, in which way uh, this monumental work actually uh, reorganizes a certain space of, uh, I would say, of interpretation of Europe 
um, uh, former Eastern Europe uh, and also uh, to connect, uh, I put on paper three points, maybe to open uh, the debate uh, uh, and also maybe to, uh, to talk outside of the book in order to understand or to re rethink the book from another point of view. But I wanted to say maybe uh, two other points that uh, for me, uh, reading the book and going through the details of the book in uh, uh, what was presented, it was uh, interesting to see um, the importance of uh, different avant-garde from Fluxus but also uh, to Dishan. Also to see, um, uh, I was uh, 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 impressed also by the relation to uh, the importance of Nikos Scherdely uh, as a central uh, figure, uh, not only for uh, visual arts, but actually uh, for uh, the uh, understanding of, uh, let's say, of uh, modernist uh, radical thinking of Hungarian uh, art. So this was for me quite an important thing and also um, uh, the relation to Lajos uh, Kasak uh, and the connection actually to Kasak to constructivism and before. So in this way, uh, uh, the book uh, um, for, uh, for us, uh, for those who are into uh, the, in, in the research, uh, opens uh, really a um, uh, much wider history. Uh, that is uh, also because of these relations that are established and they are actually very, um, uh, very clearly uh, in the book because um, it's uh, the lines that are written, the fluxus is there uh, and then it's uh, many members of the fluxus and then it's the relations and the importance but also the relieving, let's say, fluxus in a Hungarian context if we think about the interventions that are being uh, done by uh, Erdely, uh, Miklos Erdely, so it's really uh, interesting, uh, um, uh, much wider aspect than only uh, the, the period that is covered. But then also what was interesting for me was um, uh, because uh, in uh, 1979 the art pool was actually established, really. At that point, uh, I can say uh, that uh, exists uh, um, uh, a straight uh, uh, relation to the Hungarian scene in, uh, in uh, um, what was going on in ex Yugoslavia, because uh, in 1979, um, it was uh, um, a period that uh, it's a little bit different than the Hungarian scene. Uh, in the uh, uh, Slovenian context, but also uh, mostly the Slovenian context from which I'm coming where I'm formed, uh, the punk movement was very strong, uh, much more stronger, and uh, also this brought, uh, 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 and also the position of ex Yugoslavia was much different than Hungary and other former Eastern European countries because we had a relation to uh, wider theoretical uh, input uh, and especially the French theoretical uh, post-structuralism, post-Marxism, anti and so on. Uh, so in that period um, for us, for example, for the Slovenian scene and for the performance was very much the, um, uh, influential uh, Peter, Peter Halas. And uh, when I got to the book, I, because Peter Karch was actually um, a persona non grata. In that period, he all, already went and was forced to leave uh, by the Hungarian state uh, to go to New York. And uh, um, next to Slavia, as I say, it was a completely different scene because we had uh, um, like Vita that was uh, the uh, film fest, uh, theater festival in Belgrade, in which the biggest name were coming at that point from Brook, uh, that actually were everywhere in the world. So the difference is also interesting and important between different contexts. And I remember we went uh, to a bit of, uh, in Belgrade and uh, the uh, uh, Harash that had at that time already um, established uh, the sport theater had this performance that was really uh, crucial for uh, performance uh, tradition in Yugoslavia. The title was Andy Warhol Last Club. And uh, this Andy Warhol Last Club, when I went through and I saw uh, the cars being part also and being part of the group before Arthur 
practically it was already in the chapter in the chapter project. I just wanted to say that it was really interesting um, to think uh, um, of uh, uh, different uh, relations, but also of uh, maybe uh, to rethink, and now I'm coming to these three points, of a wider space that is open. One point is uh, uh, the whole idea of this uh, naming of Central European context. That I, am, my, I, must, I, I must say I'm very critical because uh, I think uh, uh, that uh, maybe it's uh, necessary to go out of this uh, uh, Austro-Hungarian imperial lands and to actually cut with uh, um, uh, the demand of this Central Europe because practically uh, it's uh, something that is completely uh, hierarchically imposed because as we see a better color she's coming from New York bringing work work and completely uh, reorganizing the whole space of performance in which decided it was really a tremendous impact at that time and he could not have any performance academy but he was living in uh, New York and there was connected with uh, the uh, underground scene uh, in New York. The other point that uh, uh, opens the book for me um, in a very productive way and also as a question uh, is that now that it's done is actually possible to make the interpretation. And what uh, is necessary is precisely um, uh, the uh, interpretation, I would say, of these differences, of this former Eastern European space, but also uh, to have um, a relation uh, on the influences of, let's say, luxus, the charm, um, uh, uh, the constructive scene in a much wider European context. And this, I think, the book is bringing these things, and this is really uh, important. Uh, also, what means actually love and that in relation to today, and also the, uh, in the way of uh, rethinking uh, the period uh, with other theories. And for me, here is feminist theory that is in a certain way not present. Uh, then uh, it's uh, the whole question of post-colonial theories, all things that are uh, around and they are actually uh, implied as structuralist and post-structuralist theories. And then, to my mind, um, how such an important book can actually be, be published, how such a work that is actually a, a work of European and not say a real European uh, context uh, in terms of art uh, actually can be alive in the moment that if I, uh, uh, I have the right uh, um, data, Orban, Victor Orban is once again uh, elected and we see actually very homophobic, anti-Semitic uh, situation in Hungary. So these, for me, are the questions now that are open. How to have this uh, avant-garde thinking? Where is this potential, this uh, uh, critical mass? For all these 40 years, while we have, what, we have a homophobic, racist, anti-Roma, anti-Semitic uh, uh, Calgary and all the other former Eastern European countries, including also Austria and others, Western European EU, are actually following this. So this for me is the most the three central points that uh, the productivity of this book really uh, bring past, but also what is the future? Where is this uh, position? And where is this potential? Why do we have uh, this reality now? So this is the thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I agree with you in this point. And uh, I won't uh, talk too much because I'm dealing with texts and to explain texts is, is rather difficult here. So, but with my students, I, I was experiencing texts and most of them were born after 1990. So they didn't uh, have anything about the, the, the material which is seen in, in this book and in, in our tool. And <clears throat> it had to be explained what it was, what the soft uh, leftish dictatorship was in the last years, at least, and, uh, and how 
they put uh, the, the writers, the, the, the filmmakers like also Ed Day and others could, could work without minimal uh, financing or without any finance. So the minimalistic, uh, uh, the minimalistic character of all artists and um, and um, and uh, playwright and, and poetic uh, activity has to be explained. And after all, uh, the neo avant-garde is not very uh, not very sympathetic, not very interesting for the students now. It's, a, it's just uh, it's just a little bit. It's a, it's a it's a small small and not and seemingly not very important not very important uh, topic. But um, as I uh, when I was thinking about what, what we will speak about this evening, I was writing uh, that those uh, actors and uh, writers and painters and sculptors and filmers were not uh, uh, were not they, they didn't intend to go to jail they didn't want to be heroes or get psychiatric treatment or forced to emigrate though they emigrated and by and by uh, they just wanted to to Criticize and uh, you know, in a sarcastic and uh, and uh, very very uh, 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 explicit way the the, the the society this 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 uh, absurd uh, dictatorship and um, and. Uh, the, the only thing that became came quite clear after the first lecture for the students was that these avant-garde artists and literates of this period in the second half of the, the 20th century appreciated and lived special values and virtues. For example, courage to stand up for their beliefs, civil disobedience, barefacedness, sarcasm, satirical mockery, inventiveness, openness, optimism, and a strong desire for international compatibility, for <coughs> that, that they, they get understood uh, abroad. And it was, I mean, here I disagree with you, it was a certain kind of, of Central Europe, uh, Central Europe, not communists, but but uh, like uh, this chapel, this chapel studio of Galantai, um, there went a Serbian avant-garde group, Bosch and Bosch, and they went. These these people, the, the, and, and somebody, but they were not there. They were not. Yeah, mostly yeah. Hungarian. Yeah, Hungarian. Yeah, not, not, only, Lali. not only Hungarian. Yes, uh, but the court in Bosch and Bosch is yes. a. Uh, Yes. A very important figure. It's true, but the, the most important, I mean, the core of this was actually the wrong side. Yes. Yes. But no, there, there was also the code group. Yes. Also code and e code group. And they were, they were mostly Serbian. So, and the, on the other hand, Beck had brought the, the Slovakian artist to, to the chapel school. They were mm -hmm. this handshakes and, uh, and after the, uh, I think, four years after the... Um, was the anniversary of, of, of the invasion, yes. 68. Yes. And it was completely prohibited to, to do such a um, even, uh, even in private spaces in Czechoslovakia. So it was very... And uh, <coughs> what you say now, it, the, for the students, is, uh, is, is, is therefore, now that can be therefore interesting, because these uh, characteristic civil disobedience, uh, satirical uh, attitude, uh, inventiveness, openness, and now they see the completely opposite thing. They are <laughs> everything is closing. They are not looking in the future, but looking uh, into the past with a, uh, with a partly absurd uh, mythologies. Uh, and, and created an absurd uh, mythologies, and uh, also the students are asking 
how this can, this could happen. You know? And therefore, to understand this is the teaching or researching of, of Nero Mangard one way. It's not the only way because I'm in history and sociological aspects and everything are also very important. But also this book and from this book and from the archive you can understand <coughs> what what went on at that time. I saw that uh, really um, studying neo avant-garde, Eastern European, Central uh, European, or Southeast European, for the students coming mostly from um, German-speaking countries, was something really enthusiastic. I would say that there were many of them in the courses, but they were really, really interested. And um, just going back um, to um, the idea that um, the new avant-garde or this kind of artistic parallel culture can give us something to understand uh, the world we are living in or the arts we are seeing day by day is that, for example, I recently read an article of uh, Sylvia Sasser, who is a um, professor of uh, performance studies at the University of Zurich, and she, one of her statements is um, that um, some forms of, uh, as she calls it, uh, subversive affirmation, for example, of uh, artistic expression that were developed in the countries of um, former um, um, Eastern Bloc can uh, be found now in 21st century art movement. That critical attitude that uh, somehow um, deconstructed the system from its inside. So I think that this is also a very uh, exciting idea to think about the art from uh, this perspective. But um, I would uh, like to go back rather to this um, definition of the active archive, or this would be just a question first for Julia, uh, that when uh, did the idea came up, or what is it exactly, just that uh, Tania mentioned it, and I think he, he interpreted it in a right way, but um, just to get back once again to the archive. Balaton Bogári történetről szó esett. A Balaton Bogári történet folytatódhatott volna, de tudjuk, hogy miért nem folytatódhatott. És az Árpulban folytatódott a Bogári történet tulajdonképpen, egy véletlennek köszönhetően, ugye Júlival visszatalálkoztam. Ennyit röviden. Most, ha már so um, we wanted to answer just very quickly. Uh, the idea was that uh, the origin of the whole active archive um, is uh, the project is uh, the chapel exhibitions at Valtombok Lar, and it was a kind of coincidence that it would continue. Uh, this coincidence is one uh, that Jörg uh, and Julia met. And now here comes the other part of the answer. <laughs> Tehát ha már itt a egy helyzetben kerültem, ezáltal meg kellett fogalmaznom, hogy akkor mit kérdjek a helyzettel. Most a helyzettel ugye kétféle dolog, kétféle módon tudtam gondolkodni. Egyik, ami a korábbi álmaimhoz kapcsolt, a Balaszlóvárhoz, ami nem valósult meg. A másik pedig valamiféle jövőhöz kapcsolt, amit kettőt tudunk csinálni, ami egy ilyen emigráns jövő tulajdonképpen de ugyanakkor az egész világban levés volt szó. So there was a situation given that uh, both of them met and uh, 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 Dury wanted to uh, find a way how he could express uh, all the ideas he had. So one part of these ideas was that uh, connected him to the past, what happened in Valtomokat, and the other ideas uh, about what he could do uh, with, with this in, in the future. No. Tehát tulajdonképpen ez az avantgárd archívum volt az első neve, aktív archívumnak, amiből látszik, hogy, hogy azt akarta folytatni, ami már félben lehet volna. 
Na most az Alpi Archiv elnevezés az később keletkezett, 92-ben, amikor a visszaveszére megjutottunk, tehát amikor már intézményé váltunk, de korábban is ugyanígy alig változtattunk a szöveget egy kicsit, kicsit finoman, finomságot, tehát finomított. De a lényeg az, hogy kellett egy program, tehát ez tulajdonképpen egy program, egy életprogram, hogy hogy keletkezik, hogy tud egy archívum keletkezni, hogy tud egy tudásomnak keletkezni, arról szólt a dolog. Tehát, hogy csinálunk valamit, és a, alkotunk egy művet, művészek vagyunk, és akkor a, a mű az egy hát bizonyos munkát igényel, és bizonyos tapasztalatot igényel, és így tovább, amit a mindenfajta mű igényel. És ennek a, a következménye az, hogy valami tudásunk itt Most ez a hatni So, 
uh, how could these two systems uh, live or exist parallel to each other? But the, I just want to say um, uh, that uh, these uh, uh, parallel uh, systems, they are not uh, some speciality of uh, former socialism. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really, it's very necessary to be clear because uh, the West uh, culture it now make these differences because socialism was seen as a totalitarian. The totalitarian aspect of the Western society is very well contextualized to such cultures. Mm -hmm. Only with the uh, formulation of subcultures, like also we think maybe of an avant-gardist movement that uh, it's actually, uh, when it's the avant-gardist movement, is always uh, against, uh, uh, in a certain way, uh, to the prescribed uh, modernist credo. So in this way, it's not just uh, that uh, we, uh, we have to be very clear that we live in 2014 and with such ideology uh, that I agree when you are saying that the students are not interested. They are not interested because they are uh, much developed and they cannot anymore buy this kind of uh, very uh, narrow, uh, uh, like uh, uh, romanticizing how it's possible. Uh, the same is with the subculture. Uh, the whole West uh, was actually resizing subcultures. The potentials that come out from uh, the cultural uh, uh, development is the subcultural movement. Mm -hmm. uh, going on precisely with the civil movement. I mean, with the, without the black civil movements in America, what will be from America? Nothing. And what will be from Europe without this knowledge and this disobedience that was brought there in the 60s? I mean, this was um, uh, the most important fight. So, in this way, these parallel things in, uh, uh, um, so to say, context of former Eastern Europe is, uh, uh, has to be contextualized because there exist different uh, positions of this, um, uh, so to say, parallel exist a certain idea of this uh, middle class society, this public society, but also exist really, as I said, a feminist movement exists uh, in Exodus speak, a subcultural uh, movement that was unique. So, and these things had nothing to do together. Mm -hmm. One punk movement, a feminist movement, was never fighting to have actually a bourgeois in this way, because the punk movement already in England was against the Thatcher and actually was against the, the uh, horrific, uh, 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 so to say, it was a class struggle. So we have to be very clear. I mean, we cannot talk in 2014 like we are in 1990. I mean, this, this was clear. Mm -hmm. So in this way, uh, the, the archive stays in the moment that it's put together, it's fantastic, but then what is necessary is interpretation. Mm -hmm. What is necessary, uh, the activity of the archive is always connected with the uh, uh, entering the archive and actually making the arranged uh, interpretation. This is a problem. Where the thing stands, where the, the avant-garde movements are cut, what means, uh, where it's other things, how it's possible to have a reality today that actually is completely upside down of uh, the avant-garde uh, ideas, where it's really a homophobic. So these things so I think we have to be very, very precise. And this book is super because it's bringing back to these questions. Uh, uh, we can talk about the whole different in front of us. And this, uh, but now we have to work. This is now the initial point to start. Uh, younger interpretation, this is what is missed. We don't have uh, younger uh, writers who are having new theoretical knowledge and they enter the things in, uh, in a different way. So in this way, I completely agree, it's really boring because it's the uh, Central European art history is presented in this national state, uh, completely cemented elements and the generations are open. They move, they, they see the things, they, they see the processes, they want, uh, they don't, they cannot start to this heterosexual, patriarchal uh, Christianity that is now uh, retaken in the nation state of the world. They are really, uh, they, they know this and this is why if we don't change, practically for them this is passé.
And uh, <coughs> this is the first book, first completely English book about this stuff in Hungary. Mainly I did this thing to see, for example, Eastern uh, European or former socialist countries uh, as isolated uh, entities that they that they were not connected to anything outside of um, this what we call the uh, Eastern Bloc. Because what um, uh, Galante has done with his uh, main art project, the connection art, is for example completely the opposite of this usually communicated. And this is what we have to make clear when we are talking about it. So in this uh, respect, I absolutely agree with you um, that some perspectives we just can't uh, uh, deny. Uh, but contextualization is for sure needed, this kind of on the macro uh, and micro, uh, micro level as well. And I wanted to ask you uh, questions about um, other um, archives and archival projects that appeared at that time, which also Daniela was talking about, the Lewis Color Archive, for example, and uh, projects that tried uh, to um, somehow rethink historicization, just like interrupted histories, or, or the Iron Group's uh, um, interaction with past and rethinking past. Um, can you think of any connections or uh, similarities or differences between these different uh, projects and all the institutional archives? Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> it was a nice attempt, uh, actually, we met uh, together uh, the, the International uh, uh, Network of European Museums and Archives organized uh, an interesting exhibition in Magba, Barcelona, where several archives were dis on display. And actually, it was very nice that uh, you came there and installed for your documentation and also the other jobs he was there and uh, uh, and uh, Kulik as well so um, maybe here is uh, the point where which is quite important in contextualization so um, to, to see uh, archival strategies to compare them and uh, of course, this is a different thing when you see archive on display in a museum. It's uh, somehow uh, different, and uh, uh, the, the conditions are changed. But uh, in a way, uh, you can see the way how uh, artists work with documentation, at least. Um, and I, I think also that uh, um, the other side of, of uh, this uh, is that uh, um, yes, the groups of artists were not isolated. They uh, they made uh, many attempts to overcome, like maybe kind of uh, social isolation. In, uh, they were in groups, but archive was kind of tool how to communicate, networking, and uh, to do networking uh, uh, internationally. And uh, this is very inspirative. So today, so for example, I found references in uh, Jeha Kotsman, who is based in Brno and has uh, also a very big archive, and he was uh, uh, communicating not only with Arpo, also with Keza Pernesky, uh, in, uh, I think it was based in Munich, in mm -hmm. Cologne, mm -hmm. sorry, in Cologne. So, uh, and there were like many people, like uh, Peter Stembera from Prague, uh, are uh, like sending uh, letters to each other. So uh, uh, this was uh, we now have a digital era. So this was how this was everything was on paper. So and seeing uh, uh, I went last time I went through uh, photographies like artists as bureaucrats, artists uh, taking uh, you, you mentioned mentioned this subversive identification as a strategy, as a like identifying with it's the him or herself with a, a state apparatus, with the with the identifying himself or herself with the 
with a bureaucracy. And you can see it in create quick approach, you can see it uh, also in art pool approach and uh, use collab as well. So this is kind of uh, um, approach that is you could compare the different uh, various uh, uh, but very similar similar uh, 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 appropriations of, of bureaucrat bureaucracy and creating kind of counter archive because those if we imagine like uh, in relation to state archives they they were uh, amnesic they, they were uh, not uh, there was not not they were, they were something based on completely different uh, hierarch maybe hierarchical approaches and these are uh, that these are completely on a different approach different uh, uh, or opposite opposite uh, uh, way of thinking it's not hierarchical but it's horizontal horizontal approach mm -hmm. so mm, yeah this is for me quite important uh, in researching uh, artists and uh, you have a question for you that um, have did you know anything of these other archives? I guess yes, Buddha's color archive, Quick Quick's archive. And within Tunch? Yeah, within, in fact, in fact uh, we had a very, it, it was very difficult to get in touch with artists and institutions, parallel institutions in the Eastern world. It was much easier to uh, keep uh, uh, correspondence with the Western countries and Western artists. So it was much more comfortable. And, uh, and in certain fields, it was practically impossible. So after the martial law in Poland, for years we were cut from Poland. So simply we didn't get answers for letters, probably they never got them. And we didn't get that. So, it, no, so we, we knew several archives in, in the Western countries, like Discrena or. or uh, Nanucci, Maurizio Nanucci, or Roman Pelin, or Stin. And um, he, he, was, 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 was there any change in this respect um, after the system turned around in 1989 90? Was there any? Um, something more dynamic exchange between the other The years, years after the the Genesis was a very bulwars period. So everyone was at that time preoccupied with the, uh, creating a new situation and then finding out the possibilities. So for four, three, four years uh, uh, even we didn't have too much contact with the we didn't do projects, just were preoccupied to founding our institution, making it public, and then when we started in 92, then we started to, to contact everyone again to send out uh, information about the founding of uh, our institution and uh, starting with new projects at that time. At first, uh, uh, we were we really were more uh, concentrated to the Hungarian situation at that time. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to, to, to very quickly solve everything what we could solve. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a, at that time we had a project that, that we would concentrate on, on topics and, and mediums that were uh, unknown until that time to the greater public in Hungary. And this is why we, uh, we Consecrated uh, our research and projects to, to, to the Fluxus movement or to the performance art or the installation. So this was, this, this uh, idea was to do yearly projects and which were, uh, uh, there was a research uh, based on, on this yearly project and and uh, there, it was, there was always a big uh, international exhibition organized. So he, by organizing this exhibition, contacting people and artists and uh, inviting them to lecture and to some words and at the end of the year there were uh, these big exhibitions which we tried to document as, as we could. So since internet exists, it became easier. Um, and maybe um, for the 
the last uh, part of our discussion. Um, we, we touched upon the question of, of uh, the future, the future of, of archiving, or what, um, what is a, the art book in this context, or what can the art book give us uh, in new ways of preserving strategies as many as strategies? What do you think that, uh, what directions are laid down? For the future of archiving. Is there a future of art pool or art pool and archiving um, in general, if we can ask a question like this? My opinion for archiving is that we are not going to be able to do it. It's not going to be able to do it. Text says that each person is an archive, so we shouldn't be worried about it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the internet. So everyone can share anything you're sharing. Make sure for your form, I So it depends on the form, actually. My personal opinion is that maybe archiving the so yes, it, it has to find new ways. Because uh, uh, also it would be important to uh, archive information that is available now on the internet and maybe it may not be available in two years or three years. So uh, just uh, uh, archives are always needed. So somehow you should uh, uh, collect the information that is related to the activity you have and try to preserve it in a way. That you think will last. <laughs> but maybe a book, so we decided to do a book at the end because we hope it will last. So, although everything, uh, a lot of information we do have on the internet, almost everything we do have on the internet, but uh, uh, we believe that, uh, that in a book you, you can have an, uh, maybe a, a more complex overview of the book. And on, on, the, on the internet to just get lost. And, uh, but this is a different way of, of uh, research than to do on the internet. And then the other question was the, the future of art pool. Uh, at this day, I can say it's very uncertain. How can an archive be active nowadays? Or what, what we were touching upon? Of, uh, History gives us examples that we can use nowadays, but how and which um, way? What I admire in the case of Julia uh, Kainza uh, and Dirk Galantai, they, they are affective flavor, they are, they are core, they are affectivity. Actually, the archive could be a tool for pedagogy. I think that this is very important. Uh, to, to have the digitalized material is also important since we have internet, but yeah, the information flows and you know, it's, it's very difficult to, 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 uh, to, uh, uh, to stop for a moment and to think with the internet. It's almost something that was very difficult. So art could, could, could be, or archive as such would be a, Tool for pedagogy could, could be something uh, uh, that could uh, connect uh, people on a different level than, for example, uh, 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 other institutions do. So, I mean, uh, from my point of view, it's uh, uh, um, to bring uh, different platforms, different uh, uh, strategies, different uh, is the experimentality. It's, I, I mean, from um, this is what inspires me, as a, as a, also as a teacher. Mm -hmm. so, for me, it's an important thing. I will, I will maybe um, put the, the things uh, uh, differently and say that actually uh, uh, it's too, uh, too general talk because practically uh, archives uh, um, are always a question of power. 
and uh, it's very good because they said uh, that uh, without the bank uh, that uh, came in the like, survivor kit uh, in the end, uh, having a proper interest uh, and other story, uh, practically uh, this, uh, having all this archive, uh, they could not publish. So it's uh, um, clear that uh, um, it's, we cannot generalize. That uh, uh, talking just about archives, from my point of view, uh, is uh, just uh, um, uh, just talking. That the question is always what kind of archive, uh, which uh, kind of archive has the possibility actually to function as an archive, and as they uh, said very clearly, uh, in a which moment something that uh, it's so uh, long actually uh, has, uh, has to stop and uh, if I understood you have to write uh, this uh, letter and ask for the help in the last moment in order actually to have uh, uh, published the thing. So um, uh, for me it's more important uh, the relation of, uh, of, uh, of uh, how the archive are actually coming to life which, uh, which archive are uh, given in life uh, and what other things are actually not uh, possible to take the format of the archive. So for me the, the content and uh, uh, it's one of the most important for today because otherwise uh, it will be just archives but uh, between this uh, many things will just uh, disappear and also uh, this mechanism of power uh, one of the most important. That means that some things are prevented because of many reasons, uh, because they bring maybe some the logical points to actually get this form. So I think uh, the point of the power and the relations between archives in a uh, very specific uh, context of mm -hmm. social and political um, it's uh, uh, a key interest and mm -hmm. the survival is precisely um, uh, not to, uh, to live as you actually went on, uh, but if you stay behind and it's a project that uh, um, is connected and open in a certain different history, um, so to, to try to actually open this and make the following of archives is important thing. But it's also important the knowledge that we get telling us how all of these conditions to, to publish this actually. To, to, to what we were forced uh, practically in the end um, uh, before, before publishing the, the book in the archive, you had actually completely to change because you had to approach other institutions in order to get the money uh, or not. Wasn't wasn't uh, <coughs> wasn't in a project to join the archive to the museum? This, uh, I, I think that everyone faces this that uh, that is uh, some an artist is creating the world of life and at the end uh, he has a lot of words and what what will he do with them? And uh, this is just the same, so we, uh, it, it was not a problem to keep the archive in our own flat uh, until 89 because it was not so big. But then, <laughs> now it's, it's already too big to put it back in the flat, even in the flat or studio, uh, what to say. And, uh, and, and this, this is the main problem, so this is why it cannot be managed by private persons. And yet, from the middle, you can just get the ball. Mm -hmm. So time passes, and if you have not the opportunity to to teach uh, uh, young persons, you can and then, uh, train them to, to work as, as you were working, or just finding out new projects in which they can continue and you can assist them until they are they are really good. So then, it's uh, it means that that maybe. Uh, the story is over, so if you land somehow, so if you cannot be uh, given over, it will land, in a way. Of course it's a pity because we think that there is a lot of energy and possibility in this time. And uh, I, we think that there is a, a tremendous information and uh, uh, about the 
parallel culture and the context uh, of, of uh, which uh, Hungarian artists were working and, and uh, uh, what kind of relations they were able to do with the world and what uh, uh, common projects they were able to, to realize despite this being the, the behind the iron curtain. And which is very important and very interesting. But the research just started in these last uh, two, three years. So before, for almost 20 years, nothing happened. So not uh, really uh, research what were done in our, in our school were mostly related to the real and not, not to the not to what is really the, not to what the art of archives is really about. It's parallel culture and all the context of this parallel culture. And, and what, uh, what I find really uh, sad is that this is just right now that the European community uh, has uh, several projects but they will be they will for next year, for 2015. They will start in 2015. And if, if we will close uh, sooner, then we just cannot use this uh, big uh, opportunity what, what our material presents for such resources. Yes, and, and your question that, that to how to join the museums. Yes, this is a long, long uh, uh, discussion between uh, Hungarian state museums and Artur. But uh, the problem is that simply it also needs space and money. And from the and the decision from the from the opinion leaders and from the so it's, it's not enough that some museum directors would like very much. To, to, be, to, to get the art pool as a filiale, there are several who would be lucky, happy to, to have it. But if, if there is uh, no money to, to keep art pool alive until this can be arranged and the place can be found and the uh, personnel can be paid, then it will not be realized. And what, what an, another opportunity is, what I, we think that the politicians uh, think, and that at the end we will give it up and just give the material to, to Hungarian state museums. But I promise that we will not do this. <laughs> Well, uh, although this is the end, or because of the current situation, for sure, we're being pessimistic, but I can say that uh, as uh, far as I can tell now, uh, really the interest in the archives and archival strategies from the second public sphere in research is growing, and I see that uh, the students whom I teach week by week um, are becoming enthusiastic about to learn more about these circumstances, about the concrete archives themselves. And I uh, uh, wish and I would like to come as often as I can as a researcher uh, to um, art pool and to bring uh, the students there almost every term. And um, with these words, the closing words, I would like to thank uh, everyone uh, for participating, especially uh, very big thank you for the speakers here and also for the audience that uh, staying uh, until at the end. And I will be prepared in a few minutes a small reception and I would be happy if you could stay a little bit longer to discuss with us what we have heard before. So thank you very much.
A szuper most ő küldte át, a láttam, hogy megjelentették a Mauro Dora királyos kapcsán. Egy olyan gyönyörű kis fénykép van, a Miklóssal él ott a Szeret, egy nagyon köszönöm. Az a internet, ez nem egy kis látom, de tényleg az, hogy egy ilyen könyv, hogy a Ezt jobban szeretnék. Abszolút. Egyszer voltam még, 